Um, what are we doing? Open the apartment door. Okay, we have this. We can go do this. We can open the door. Uh, find Moro, but we need to go down south. Prove your authority. Talk to Titus and establish authorities. I don't have that yet. The cook. I'm right here. The cook. Is he going to do something? No. Like when they got here, he wasn't able to do anything. Or he wasn't doing much, I should say. You missed it in show before. The kids came by completely fucked a tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was porno. Okay. Uh, was deeper than you could ever understand. I wish I could have been here to see it. Now I have some few questions. Okay, yeah. Uh, 28. Nothing much to say. Alright, I just want to like talk to him, see what he had to say about all that. About what happened with um Measurehead taking down the body. Uh what we need? We need something for the body. Uh bring chain cutters. Alright. We go do that. Here you get chain cutters, and then we go in here. And then talk to the cook. Um I think we failed on you. Um, pull out the toolbox. Um, chain cutters. And I'll take the flashlight as well. Uh, especially belt. I could have used the belt. God damn, I could have used the chain cutter to cut it. But even then, I think it's too high up. It's robust, weatherproof, and well made. Please issue blue. Alright, cool. Uh, you see in the dark, you will otherwise miss. Put that away. Close the door. Alright, go over here. This is a lot smoother than before. I did mess around with the settings a little bit too. See, yeah. Mess around with the settings just so the performance. Because when I was checking it back in the. Whatchamacallit, in the footage, I realized it was getting a little choppy when I was running around. But when I'm like standing still looking around in text dialog box, it was perfectly fine. Um, The running man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Alright. Um, external examination. Now that we have the chain cutter, let's cut the belt. Hmm. He shows you the point on the man's neck where belt cuts into the flesh. Cut with as much precision as you can, please. Of course. My pig is gonna F his head off. Um, no, he ain't. Your pig is a born fuck. Look for a good spot to cut. I'm not your pig, who know? Yes, I'm Kuno's pig. I agree. I'm, not your, I'm gonna say I'm not your pig, who know? You are. Whatever. Ooh, stupid argument. <laughs> it went down by one because of the stupid argument. Alright, look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white br Ew, rising over the yeast. Alright, interfacing gave instruction. Um, uh, I have to go for it. Yes! I was so scared. <laughs> um, after deliberating... <coughs> after some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot. Try and tighten the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat, it, sweat forming on your brow. Um, snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut. Ooh. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower. Um, buck. Banquet. Okay. Revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red leisure mark around it. Uh, the lieutenant kneels closer, running his fingers through the dark red groove until there's a gap. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the lig lig ligature ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hold up, I need to turn on the light. It's getting dark now. So the light is necessary now. Uh, hemorrhaging is observed on the skin above and below the leisure mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 to 1.5 meters. Chest is in K intact. He, um, he presses down on it. Normal contour. Adamant is protuberant. Pose impact. Genitalia he pulls down the man's underpants. Oh, it's gonna happen, see? I knew it. It is clearly what they've been waiting for ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. 
In the telly is, mo is male and a normal Marco Ball. No evidence of injuries. I'll write it down. You can inspect it. I mean, that will help with Ku now. Um. Yeah, let's check it out. Um, dead man penis is average size, congested from the downward coll collection of blood. Ew. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is green. Ew. Marbling is present. Okay, I definitely didn't want to inspect it. Back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn the corpse on his side. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but is symmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thighs, and hip. Um, in addition, I see smaller residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Probably because of the... Yeah, from the runes sustained over two, maybe more decades. The spells and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Huh. The scarring is extensive, way more than a, a law's official. Hmm. We have a real museum here. All battles, wars. Right down. Last item, hands. He takes the man's right hand in his, in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Let the lieutenant work alone. Hands clean. He inspects the wrist. No sign of a recent struggle. Hmm. So, I guess they either got him by surprise? They had to, because if he wasn't struggling, yeah. Then he didn't see it coming. Yeah. I was, maybe I'm just not seeing that. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Write it down. Whoa, he turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his, ta of his jacket. He hear a muffled voice. That's all for the external. Well done. All right, number two, internal examination. Uh, central nervous system, he says, and then concludes abruptly, I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to the story. Um, if I may add the moral of the story. What would that be? He looks at you inquisitively. The dead man looks too, with barely in contained excitement to hear the moral of the story. The brain is very valuable to compromise in its... Vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. Lieutenant... Um, Grint, I think that may be well may well be the moral of every story officer. I write N A. <laughs> um, good. Musculoskeletal skeletal purge fluid is coming from the mouth. He gets close to the mouth hole. Eyes squinting from the stench. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Eye old bone bone. Let's see. His eyes almost closed. The lieutenant puts his hands on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips. Black and vicious. No. Oh. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh. No. Oh. Like the crackling of an old house at night. No. Oh. No, oh, no. Kunes, shut up. Um, the high, high old bone is fractured. He says after a while. The rest of the muscular system is intact. Unremarkable. What is the high old bone? What did he say? Where did he put it? Um, like around his mouth. Ew. Um, back hunch as if in prayer. He begins to pry open the dead man's jaw. Respiratory system. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Overall cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received dental implants, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucus of the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream, no sign of relief. Rises from the darkness inside. It's human there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. Feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in, into in that mouth of his. Look deeper inside. Oh, damn it. It's hard. Once more, you taste the stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from you. I could get medicine. I could get medicine real quick. Um, into your mouth. You're forced to swallow just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Alright, put it down. Uh, he writes his brow. Hepo... Tiability. Right, N.A. Same for toxicology and serology. Right, N.A. 
Cardiovascular, the body exhibits lividity in the lower extremities, feet, hands, neck, visually consistent with the hanging. Put it down. Uh, gastrointestinal, he breathes a sigh of relief, of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. Then he touches the corpse bloated lower animal briefly and says, Digested semi sold full food and stomach. Voila. Uh, I will omit the voila. What's next on the list? Summaries. Let's see. He tilts his head. We have bite marks. Bite marks. Contusion on the head, so he was knocked out. And chest. So, okay. Uh, and a leisure market circling the neck. You need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. Okay, bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite marks injury. Predation by birds. Oh, I've caused balance to damage. Autodologist does not to be need to be consulted. And your, office, your opinion officer? Hmm. Oh, okay. Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Opinion, fatal injury, or B, non-fatal post-mortem. Yeah, this seems like a post-mortem thing. That explains like the bite marks of all the birds, and it makes sense that it's up here as well because when there when there's a hanging, pretty much the birds would land on the shoulders and slowly peck everything here. So it makes sense. There's like no other bite marks anywhere else. So yeah, non fatal post mortem. Agree. Next injury: contusions. So the scalp bleeds from a post mortem head injuries. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A predatory on the scene has confessed to causing it post mortem. At maximum velocity. Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Right down. Um, beneath. Yeah, non fatal post mortem. Alright, next. Leisure mark. Now, this, this is what we need. A dark red aberrated leisure mark encircling the neck with a gap of the neck measuring, let's say, 7 centimeters. The hyo bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. As a hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the leisure mark. Death of the mark 1 centimeter, no sign of, of clawing on the neck. Right down. Fatal injury. Opinion, fatal injury. The ring is visible around his neck. Fatal injury. That's it. Cracks an uneasy smile. We have established cats of death. Not much, and it leaves much to be questioned, but it's a start. Sweet. Um, he produced a small black plastic roll from his jacket, a body bag. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field topsy over. Um, what now? Give him back his notebook. Now he's a, now we put him in a body bag, and I drive him to Far Bar for processing. The attendant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I did I miss something? You tilt your head and also look at the corpse. I have an established probable cause. Interesting. I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Uh, let the lieutenant take the body away without further exam. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the dead man's boot this later. Um, I guess we leave. Leave for now. Until later tonight. Um, what should I boost up? I could boost up like one of you, but none of these I really care about. Oh, superstar. Uh, first, let's make this absolutely clear. No one is saying you're an actual superstar. Ooh. My logic will go down by a lot. Um. Now, let's save it for one of these. Psychopedia, drama. Put one authority, actually. I think I'll put one ath authority. No, I'm going to save it. Uh. I want a reaction speed. Bonus from one. Oh, I got nine, minus one from that. Alright, do that one. Uh, it's not bad of it, Kuno. Now, Kuno doesn't have like anything to do now. Fuck, this Kuno kid! Calm down. 
So loud. Alright, I gotta do that. Let's do the brochette. Brochette. Oh, and then we can open the door. And then maybe go to the pharmacy. To pick up some health. Well, I, I think I could save up the pharmacy for later. Revo Shaw. Ore and Yang. Um, talk to the cook. Uh, this point, yeah. Do you send your friends with Manana? Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. Okay, thank you. What is in that brochette you're making there? He points to the large pot. The man says a couple of uh, sentences in that strange language of his, and then seems to wait for you to speak. I, sorry, I don't understand you. There's one word, sounds quizzical. Then he waits. Go with yes. None. The man looks at you, then at the soup. His face lightens up, he picks up a bottle from the shelf. Bruches needs more vodka. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the man happy and in good spirits. He nods. Clever move by the union. Ah, of course, vodka. Now that makes it a very, very special bruschette indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Um, Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. Um, Turn your finger, counter keg, cut it. No, no vodka. Yes, vodka. I'll leave the cooking to you. I'd say no. Turning my life around. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look. Then he turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. You know what's behind that door? He looks at you, then looks away. Sogan muttering something to himself. Alright. International sign of no. Alright, he doesn't have anything to say. Okay, got flashlight. We got a wrench. Wrench. Got some postcards that hopefully I can go sell. I don't know where, but I could sell them. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's my authority symbol right Looks now? Like the circus left town, Seventeen. The clowns are Seventeen percent. There's no way I could do it, but I could try eventually if I continue to max out authority. Um, uh, let's see what we could do. Let's go do that job for him. Open that door. Um, the door is behind. Okay, I know where that is. Yo, Annette, how are you doing today? Oh, something pop up. Where did it pop up? Did it pop up because I was next to Annette? Because I was over here. Where are you, by the way? Working class woman. Uh, a good one. She nods her full attention. Her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. Okay. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Okay. If she's a working class woman, why is she wor well? Because of the strike, dude. All right. Have a good day. This was a tremendously useful interlude. Let's shut up, Kim. I need to like lower the music again. The music is good, but like it is super loud at times. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here from the books? Um. Uh, okay. Doesn't have much to say after that. Oh no, you're new. Where are you? Make my own way into the. Law. Always have, always will. Are well, you the same drunk that was here over here? Um. Uh, okay, let's go over here. Let's open this up and see what we find. Still locked. What is the conceptualization? Sydney artistic impulses are infectious. There's a lot of things I can work on. A lot of things I can work on now. Okay, this is it. The place. Open this up. Uh, press your ears against the door. 
Um, this must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air. And there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Press your ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn, rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirps. Carefully knock. It muffles the sound. No response comes from the bathroom. From the, from the other apartment. I guess no one is there. The lieutenant looks uncomfortable. Lieutenant, what is your opinion of this task we're undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. <sighs> um, apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? I mind that a local thug is using RCM for his busy work, but if this gets us to the bottom of the hiss hanging, then I'm willing to overlook it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. On the other hand, he looks at the surrounding window uncomfortably. We could just tell every we open the door and leave. No one seems to be tailing us if we actually did it. Yeah, that is an option. You're right. Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get result here and there. You take the task, you make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with it. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. Huh. Maybe we could use this and maybe we could find more information about who, about the body? Maybe we could find like another chest armor in here. I think I'm gonna go for it. This is a curiosity's sake. Try to figure out what's in there. I'm using it. You try to be as silent as you can. It took a. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Mm -hmm. Sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully, no one heard. All right, we're walking in. I'm going in. I opened the door. Might as well go in. Okay. What are we finding here? What's this over here? Oh, sweet! Oh, wait, no. That was not health. Uh, let's look in here. A small suitcase full of clothes. Guests are staying over. Or he's leaving. Okay. A book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks lies open. You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the, f on the flag. This is the flag of Revershaw the Serenity. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle with the sevenfold sun miracle. It's an optical atmospheric uh, anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomenon is how old Revershaw got his flag. A point, Lieutenant, the old flag of the Serenity. Hmm. He looks around in the apartment. This tenant is an old-fashioned guy. Let's bow down for a bit. The tenant does not know, does not bow to the flag. Accept your salute with wide dignity. It is not my flag. He thinks my flag is the single blue of the zone contr of control. I just did this just to be funny. To be honest. Oh, we got a clean white shirt now. I'm taking that. My shirt now. Yeah, we got a clean one now. Got no stains. Don't like this one. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Alright, what about you? Whoever lies, whoever lives here with my fair hair, fantasy hero with big muscles. It's over here. A rope. A mug sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning a mis mysterious symbol. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. Up on the mugs. A little ring. Though cheerfully, the image on the chromatic makes you vaguely uncomfortable. The image betrays a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering characters. What do I mean uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicity very much. Typical asshole. So what? They can think what they want. This is a free world. Uh, no, I'm gonna say asshole. This person is unhappy. Damn. 
Oh, that's true, I guess. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs and then puts it down with a look of disdain. Yo, same, Kim. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking <laughs> into this man's apartment. <laughs> uh, I guess I know where... Yeah, whipping out. Yes, your broken mug friend would would very feel very much at home here. The same humor and the same mocking lines. There's the missing tin soldier. The lieutenant looks at the mugs next to each other. Whoever lives here might have used a worrying link container to dump his trash. And now they don the ire of the union. The plot dickens, as they say. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Maybe he has the stuff. Maybe he has the armor for some whatever reason. It's a good thing that we came here. Um, Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Yeah, I should. Do you think it's the same man who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be something, some random local matter, but still a nice coincidence. I'm saying, Kim, coincidence, man. You could ask everybody who this person is once you're done. All right, let's move on. I think I look there. The smell of disinfectant in the room smells like chemical. Well, I guess that's it. Get on out of here. So it was closed. Took one of his moral magnesium stuff. All right, let's get out of here. It's a good thing we opened that. Because now we can see what's going on here. Uh, let everyone know how you unlocked the door. Talk to Titus. Can't do the you yet. Find 20 Rayan, which I need like a dollar more. Ask the little girl in the village. Okay, not yet. Open a new area on Wednesday. Find a way into the secret passage. Uh, replace lost bowl. Uh, find our armor pieces. Getting the hangman boots, which I'm trying because then I can sell them. Um, run the victims. Call Alice about the info. Of, uh, okay. Victim tattoos. You know what? We're breaking into that victim's tattoos place. Um, yeah, I could do you, but you're much later. Bye. Who puts the clothes in the trash? Sing karaoke. Who made the call? And I checked out my bag. All right. Uh, um. Kunes is bored over there. Yeah, how do you feel about breaking into this guy's room? Um, Kim. How do you feel about that? I need to figure out how, like, when he comes in. A few questions. Um, do you know who lived in the foreclosed apartment? Uh, their nut job. Okay, who lives in apartment 10? No one lives there. It's been empty for months. But I talked to someone through the door. Impossible. The cleaning lady says, shaking her head. I wouldn't know if someone had moved in there. She pauses. I in the hallway. Maybe it's one of the... It's, it's those counterculture people again. Break into our house like it's public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look. Will you? Sure, I can see what's up. Yeah, investigate number 10. What can you tell me about Sydney? The artist? She scoffs. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the wall faster than I can clean them. Still, she leads an old lady to her business. More than I can say. I'm who lives behind the padlock. Oh, the, that one's a scientist. Okay, the padlock is a scientist. Uh. Yeah, pretty much we already said that before. So the padlock is. Is this 10? Yeah, this is 10. Okay, and this apartment is supposed to be empty. Did you break in here? Excuse me? Of course not. You have plenty of reasons to enter. I don't need a warrant if I suspect there's been a break in. That's true. Yeah. Oh, come on. There's a pause before you hear the door being unlocked. That was smart. The lieutenant says, nodding towards the unlocked door. Alright, we're going in. See what's happening here. Oh. You are not what I expected. I was not expecting someone in a in a suit. Real estate agent. Satisfied my name is Marie Carpenter, and I'm an agent with the Marie Steve Real Estate 
Real Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys. See? She jiggles a set of keys in her hands. Boy, there are a lot of different keys there. More than 20 at least. This is a cell. One of those barred windows. I got the hiccups. Her voice is really cheerful. Despite her obviously hating you. You want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? She fumbles through her purse, fashion, fl fishing out a light paper clad passport. Sure. I expect it. It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Rebel Shell Zone of Control written under a nondescript municipal logo. Um, there's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Right, nice haircut. Thank you. She slips the passport back in her purse. If you have any questions, I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. Uh, I'll do this one first. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We close the apartment and plan on auctioning off the valuables. But. And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can ever happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, he didn't close the neighboring door, and there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall, can you believe it? She spreads her hand, and then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He goes, the money's gone, just like that. Okay, the sum must have been puny. Um, The money has disappeared, I think. My money has also disappeared, I think. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. <laughs> it couldn't have been much money. These apartments look pretty shabby. Um, These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architectures and million real views of the bay. And good ventilation. Neighborhood Neighbors, life spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Meriton Needs has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives... Um, and those radio computer wizards. So what happened with the wall? Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. She's still shaking her head. Man manicure hands now across across her chest. Over the chest. What are you doing here? I need to get ready for the next lease. But as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. Sounds like they knew how to have a good time. Rehansable. Who lived there? Some kind of more boon old man who used to be a business owner. You think they make rent? She stops hesitating. Sudden serious look across her face. This story doesn't have a happy ending. Hmm. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? That's all. Thank you. Of course. Uh, she replies with a smile, but her eyes remain glazed over. She's been waiting for you. you leave. Alright, if you don't mind, I'm going to investigate your room. A blister pack of medicine peeks out the box. You should take it. I should. Uh, looks like a fine mattress. Don't be ridiculous. You can hear it swarming with bugs. Oh. Taking it. Mine. Oh, I got some nice shoes here. Plus one to indirect modes of taxation. Yeah, I'm taking those shoes. What do the shoes give me here? Exposure. What does the taxation even give me? You. Oh, I don't even know yet. Uh, put on the shoes. See what happens. I guess we're feeling in like 19 minutes. Um, mm, the luxury of fine thing. Just look at those black monk straps. What? Um, after spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tire feet? Oh, so that's what that is. You're right. Beautiful things do make people happy. Um, sure. I mean, depends on the person. Their definition of beautiful. Disregard the thought and the shoes. Hell no, I'm keeping those shoes. Um, beautiful things give you a rush. It's power crafting your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather. 
Sunny how to present yourself to the world. Remember when they came to take it away from you? You work for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing those shoes has made you more liberal, ultra liberal. Okay. That's right with me. I got free shoes. My shoes. Close the door, man. No, come back here. Close the door. There you go. Uh, so 11 is the astronomy guy. Tool none in hand. What is the chain cutters? Uh, shit. Shit. Thief. Chain cutters? Tools. Cutters. Was it 72? I'll come back when he's not here. Thief. Because I don't think he would approve of this. I don't think Kim would approve of me just breaking into someone's home. Uh, it's up to you. I didn't find any culture, counterculture people in the apartment. It just it was just a real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. I see. She takes out her handkerchief, wipes her nose. I hope some good people are finally gonna move in. This place needs them. Um, uh, lacks women sexual demons. That's who will come. Jesus Christ. This apartment needs slow chains, perceptually slow. Uh, no one is coming. This will be nothing but squalor just unless we start killing real estate agents. Yes, radio computer wizards are coming. We're going to save the place and the economy. Um, I don't think just computer wizards is going to save the place by itself, but I also do think it needs slow change. It's going to be slow. I'm say that. Yes, well, she doesn't know what to say, so she just calls and repeats. I hope they're good people. All right, your statements are too vague to comment on. Yeah, a little bit. All right, we got that done. We got that done. What else can we do? Uh, we could go talk to Sydney, but nah. Um, let's think. Let us think. <laughs> 